The really powerful purpose of using a tool such as Luminar AI is to take our photo from this to this. It's just adding that little bit of extra pop and detail. If I zoom in here and we look at all of the wood grain up here and we look at our before and after, before and after, you can see we're adding all of that lovely rich clarity and detail to the photo that the architects, designers and real estate agents really love. And the brilliant thing is it's all done with a preset. So follow along with me and by the end of the video, we will have built that preset from the ground up and you'll have access to that to be able to use that on your photos forevermore. First of all, let me show you how quick and easy it is to utilize Luminar AI's AI to improve your photos and add that next level of polish. So all we need to do is come over to the folders section, click the little plus icon, and I have a folder here, edits for Luminar finish, and that contains the photos from this recent project that I featured in a few recent architectural editing videos. And the process is really simple. All we need to do is open up one of the photos by double clicking on it, come to the template section, come over to my templates and then we simply click one of our architecture enhancer templates and just like that it's very subtle but our photo has been elevated from this to this a nice clean and sharp image that's got a little bit more punch so here again is our before here's our after and now to get this generic preset applied to all of these photos all we do is return to the catalog select all the photos by pressing ctrl a the sliders icon in the top left denotes that we do have an edit applied to this photo and now all we need to do is right click come to adjustments and we can synchronize these adjustments across this whole set of photos. And the finishing step would just be to export these photos as a new set of JPEGs. Super easy, but before we do that, let's just jump back into the catalog and just check that we're happy with the results. Because the idea of these presets is they will work on any photo. That's the brilliant thing about this. So if we look at our before and after on this photo, before, and after, you guys will probably recognize this one from the last couple of videos. If we look at all the detail down here on the floor, before and after it's just a really nice enhancement that we can apply automatically to all of our photos if you're an architectural or real estate photographer and you see the value in what i'm sharing with you here and you don't have luminar ai yet i've got a link with a discount code in the description below so go ahead and check that out and come back follow along and let's create that preset for you so i'm going to remove this template from all of these photos by right clicking and coming to adjustments and reverting to original. And we're gonna build this template from the ground up. So in order to do that, we need a reference photo. And I've chosen this one of the kitchen here that again was featured in a previous video. And we'll jump into the edit section and I'm going to walk you through all of the tools that you should and shouldn't include. So follow along with the edit and then we'll save this out as a preset or a template as Luminar calls it, that we can apply to any one of our photos to improve our architectural and real estate photography. So we're going to build the template around the photograph I have in front of me here. However, the whole key to the success of this template is that it will actually be able to work on any photo that we throw at it. And that's one of the reasons I really like Luminar AI to take care of this finishing process for us. And as I say, this is already finishing. We've already done the heavy lifting on the file, such as combining the exterior with the interior, geometric corrections, making sure everything's nice and straight and true. What we're creating here is the finishing gloss that we're going to be able to apply to our our photos. So the first tool that we want to include is an absolute powerhouse inside of Luminar AI. It's the Enhance AI and in particular the Accent AI. You watch as I grab this and actually slide this to the right. Now I'm pushing this all the way to 100, which is far too much, but I'm going to do that for all of our tools, all of our sliders, so that you guys get a good sense of what it's actually doing. And then in the top right of any of the tools, we have this toggle off and toggle on. Toggle off and toggle on. And that's a really good way to quickly see what the tool is and isn't doing. Because this tool is built around AI, artificial intelligence, it analyzes each photo on a case-by-case -case basis and then makes adjustments based on that, such as global and local contrast improvements, saturation improvements, all of that just with this one slider. However, I obviously don't want to be as aggressive as pushing that all the way to 100, but I do want to leverage some of this AI. And for my presets, I tend to have this set somewhere around that 20 mark. The next tool I'll show you is Structure AI because again, this is working around that principle of artificial intelligence making changes for us. And it's probably pretty easy to see even without toggling this on and toggling it off that it's bringing detail through local contrast. So if we zoom into this area here and I turn this off, and I turn it on, all of that texture in the wood, the granite in the background here, that is all being brought out through this tool. Just like Accent AI, 100 is far too much, and so it's up to us where we want to set this, where we think this is a good amount. Using that Goldilocks principle where we're looking for it to be just right. 
and usually when you think you have got it just right and we toggle our before and after it's worth coming back in and just easing it off just that little bit further because these tools are powerful and if anything we want to err on the side of subtlety okay so so far we've just got the application of two ai tools structure ai and enhance ai and we can tell that they're applied just by the bullet point just to the side of the tool name and if we want to compare our original to where we've got to all we need to do is come up to the eyeball tool here and see our preview let's turn our effects off and turn them on and just like that by toggling between the two you can see already that we're giving this image just a little bit more pop a little more something something okay the next thing i want to look at is the light section and inside here we see more familiar and traditional tools such as white balance exposure etc etc obviously exposure and white balance shouldn't need to be touched because a they should have been sorted out during our initial edit of the photo and b exposure and white balance adjustments are unique to individual photos and we are trying to create a generic preset that will work well with any photo we throw at it but one tool I will look at introducing is the smart contrast. As I grab that and move that, you can see that we are absolutely adding more contrast to the scene. You take it to the left and it flattens things out. But this is one of those tools where just a little can go a long way. Obviously, 100% too much. What about just teasing in a small amount, maybe around that 10% mark? Because as we push the contrast up, we start to bleach areas out. It's nice to just counterbalance that just by dropping the highlights down slightly. And so we're not obviously introducing as much contrast as that. We were going somewhere around that 9, 10 mark. And so we can bring the highlights down, but just a little bit. The black and the white points should have been addressed and set appropriately during our initial edit, so we don't need to worry about that. But, but one thing I do find with my edits is that the white walls of interiors often actually end up being quite far into the mid-tones. And we can counteract that by grabbing a point on the tone curve and just lifting that up. Obviously, if I push that all the way, you can see that our mid-tones are getting brighter, highlights as well. But what I like to do is just push that midpoint up just ever so slightly. So areas like under here, that are actually falling quite far from a nice white point. They're just getting that soft, subtle lift. And then depending on the amount of contrast that you like in your photos and what your client likes, if you want to, you can then further improve the contrast just by creating a small S curve into this as well. I don't like to go too extreme with this. And I also don't like my shadows dropping too far into the blacks. Something like that's good. And let's just check where we've come from and where we've got to. And when we compare the original to where we've got to already, you can see that original just looks a little bit flat and dull in comparison to where we've got to. It is possible that by adding more contrast into our scene that we've actually started to push the saturation a little higher than we would want. And if you feel that the saturation is just getting a little bit away on you, what you can do is actually come in into the color section, grab the saturation slider and just drop that down a few points. And that way you should be getting the best of both worlds of the nice punchy contrast, but without such an excessive pop in the saturation. The next section we need to look at is the details section. And to get this set, it's worth just zooming in. And usually the files that I'm throwing this preset at aren't actually quite as sharp as this because whereas originally I'd be doing my sharpening inside of Photoshop, just like I'd normally be doing my curves adjustments in Photoshop, basically any adjustments that I'll be making in Photoshop that I do on a regular basis, I'm trying to pull that away from Photoshop and bring it into Luminar so that I can automate that process rather than having to do that on a photo by photo basis inside of Photoshop. So the sharpening amount here, and Luminar really does have a fantastic sharpening algorithm, I push that all the way to 100 and you can see haloing, but that is actually because it's doubling up on what I've already done inside of Photoshop during the previous video. And like I said, I wouldn't normally have this level of sharpening already existing in the file. And so somewhere around that 50 mark is normally very good to apply to an unsharpened image. Now the small, medium and large detail sliders, they're okay, but used judiciously. You don't want to go too far with these. So as I push this all the way to 100, it's certainly bringing out all the detail on the wood grain even on the leather of the chair here, but it's also adding back in noise into my photo. So I'd never want to go that far. And I actually think a really small amount, somewhere around three is absolutely fine. The medium details are okay, but I'm not a big fan of them. So I normally keep those pretty light as well. And the same for the large details. Not a huge fan, but a little can go a long way. So again, I set that very low, somewhere around three is fine. So if we toggle this off, and toggle it on there's barely any noticeable difference i'll zoom in but again toggle off toggle on and there you have a sharper image with more details and i would highly recommend building that into luminar rather than doing that as i say on a case-by-case -case basis on every photo inside of photoshop
It's going to save you a whole heap of time and also keep your Photoshop documents much smaller in file size. Okay, the next thing we want to build in is a bit of denoise. And where you set this will depend on your camera's sensor and the ISO that you actually shot the photo at in the first place. At 100, we can see that it's destroying all of that lovely detail that we brought back. But one thing I do like is that the algorithm is actually respectful to the hard edged lines. So what I like to do is normally put this somewhere around that sort of 10, 11 mark, just to take care of any of the noise that's creeping into the shadows. And now let's close denoise and let's have a look at what we've done. Here's our before, here's our after. Here's our before, a little flat and washed out. And here's our photo with just a little bit more polish. But let's see what else we can do. One of the areas where Luminar AI really shines is in its creative tools. But when it comes to architectural photography and you think authenticity and realism is king, surely there's no real place for the creative tools. Well, that may be, but I've found that there are a couple of tools that can still really help us in architectural photo editing. And the first one is one of my favorites in Luminar, and that is the mystical filter. Now I'm gonna crank this all the way to 100 and you're gonna think I'm crazy. Why on earth would I want to be applying any of this tool to an architectural photo? Let's look at our before and let's look at our after. Well, believe it or not, I actually like a little bit of this softening effect. Because we've added more structure and detail into the wood here, I actually think just softening things up ever so slightly just helps to give us a more pleasing image. And yes, of course, 100% is far too much. But I actually think just adding a little bit of mystical into this, it just gives it a nice, almost intangible quality. Because if I turn that off and on, you can't really tell that it's there. If you didn't know that I'd applied that, you wouldn't know anything about it. But as I push it to 100, you can see what it's doing. It's just putting a little bit of that effect into our photo. In fact, I'm going to go a little higher. Let's go for 13. And another tool that when used modestly is actually really useful for us is the dramatic filter. Again, I'm going to crank this all the way to 100 so you can see what it's doing. Okay, it's creating a more high contrast monochromatic look. Let's look at our before and our after. And while the overall look isn't that pleasing, if we look at the white walls and the white ceiling, it's actually adding a level of purity to those white walls and white ceilings. So again, what if we were just to add in just a small amount of this effect? Not 100, not zero, you know, somewhere around this sort of like five mark. Like I say, subtlety is key. Let's toggle it off and toggle it on. It's barely noticeable, but you know that it's grabbing those neutral tones, those walls, the ceiling, and pushing it into a cleaner, crisper white. So if we can include just a little bit of that in our preset, that's going to help us out. Okay, let's close that down. So here's the thing, as I toggle out before and after, this actually raises quite an interesting point. While no one of these tools on their own looked like they were doing too much and we thought we'd actually been quite modest with our application of it. So for example, Enhance AI, a tool that I really love, we kept that relatively low at 20. But when we compound tool on tool on tool, we can actually end up with an effect that's just a little bit too strong. So here's our original. Here's our after. I do like the overall effect, but what if it's a little bit too strong for us? Do we need to come into each and every tool and just reduce the amount to a point that we feel happier with? Absolutely not. There's a much better way of doing it. And if we come down to the bottom right here, you'll see this slider. If I grab this, this is our overall slider. Then as I take it all the way to the left, that's taken this look that we just created completely away from the photo, move it all the way to the right, and we've got 100% of it. But by moving the slider left and right, we can use our eye to settle on an amount of this effect that we feel happier with. So now we've got our before and our after, same effect, but probably now with around 80%. And I think that looks much better. So now all we need to do is click on the three ellipses here and click save. And now when we jump into the templates tab, we'll have a brand new template here. And we just want to click over on the ellipsis this side, click rename, give it an appropriate name, hit enter. And now this template is available to us to edit any of our photos. So if we jump back into the catalog section here and let's open up one of the exteriors and we just want to test that that template looks good on this. So I just click it, Luminar runs its calculations and there we have it. We've got our before and we've got our after, before and after. I'll zoom in and we should be able to see some detail improvements. Here's our before, here's our after. And while I do like what it's doing, I've definitely been a little bit too aggressive with these sliders. More for you guys viewing the video to actually be able to see the effect that we're applying with our before and after. But less is more. In this case, I've been a little bit too over the top. I'm going to grab the amount slider, just ease that back almost to halfway. Luminar takes a minute just to recalculate this. And let's look at our before 
and after, that's much better. So what I can do is come back to my catalog and if I'm happy with what I've done here, I'll just select all of these photos with control A, right click, come to adjustments and I'm gonna synchronize those adjustments. So sync adjustments. And now if I open any one of these photos, Luminar is going to run through applying those tools and you can tell it's calculating just by the little animation on the logo. And now we can look at our before and after, before and after, zoom into an area of detail, just check it out, before, and after, before and after. It's just icing on the cake that can really help your work stand out from the crowd. And as I say, all we need to do now is come back to the catalog, right click and choose export. And then as per normal, we'll just set our location for the photos to go through and set the parameters for the export. Hit export, Luminar AI is gonna take a while to run through all of this because it's gonna be applying artificial intelligence to calculate changes to each and every one of those photos. But hey, that's hard work and time that you're not having to worry about. Go and grab a drink, see your friends, see your family, and then get these photos back to your client. Thanks so much for watching guys. And don't forget guys, if you wanna pick up Luminar AI at a discount, I've got a link in the description below with a discount code. And that also helps my channel out as well because they do give me a small commission from that. And that is much appreciated and helps me keep creating this free content for you guys. Please let me know what you thought in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.